Another perfect day for maintaining our superior combat traditions, Grandmaster Krasthul announced to the empty training hall, admiring how his forearms cast elegant shadows in the rising light of Vega Prime's triple suns. He stood atop the crystalline observation platform, overlooking the Sacred Combat Academy's main training grounds, all 2,000 square meters of perfectly polished opalescent floor tiles, each one blessed by 300 years of meditation, because obviously floor tiles needed blessing. Obviously. The morning light scattered through the transparent dome above, creating rainbow patterns that any other species would consider beautiful. But not Krasathol's people, the Zenathi. No, they had spent 10,000 years perfecting the art of appreciating beauty while pretending not to notice it. It was, as they said, the first step toward combat mastery. Grand Master! Senior Instructor Pelvora burst through the doors, her ceremonial robes fluttering in what she probably thought was a dramatic fashion. The new semester candidates have arrived. Ah, yes. Krasathul nodded sagely, stroking his ceremonial beard with his upper right arm while signing ancient wisdom symbols with his other three limbs. Time to observe another group of hopefuls attempting to grasp what took our ancestors fifty generations to perfect. The Sacred Combat Academy of Vega Prime stood as the galaxy's premier institution for martial arts training. Not that anyone had actually bothered to rate combat schools across the galaxy. They just declared themselves the best about 5,000 years ago, and everyone was too polite to argue. Have you reviewed the candidate list, Grand Master? Pelvora asked, her head tentacles twitching with barely contained excitement. Of course not, Krasathul replied, maintaining his perfectly serene expression. That would show eagerness, and eagerness is the ninth forbidden emotion, according to the ancient scroll of combat principles the one we spent three millennia writing, which could have probably been finished in a week if someone hadn't insisted on meditating between each letter. The Academy's combat techniques were legendary, the seven forms of celestial movement, which basically involved a lot of spinning while trying not to get dizzy. The eighteen positions of stellar grace, which looked suspiciously like interpretive dance but was definitely absolutely combat-focused. And the most prestigious of all, the grand sequential harmony pattern, which took most students fifty years to master, mainly because the instructions were intentionally written backwards. But, Grand Master, Pelvora persisted, her voice dropping to a whisper, this semester we have a... a human applicant. Krasathul's perfect posture faltered for a microsecond. A human, a death-worlder, in our sacred academy. He paused for dramatic effect, something else that had taken the Zenathi several centuries to master. Well, this should be entertaining, like watching a Groknak try to perform quantum physics, while juggling in zero gravity. Little did Krasathul know his perfectly maintained world of ancient combat arts was about to be turned upside down. But then again he didn't know many things, that was also part of the training. The orientation ceremony was proceeding exactly as it had for the past twelve thousand years. Precisely choreographed movements, perfectly timed pauses, and absolutely no one paying attention, just as tradition demanded. That was until Sarah Chen walked in, and in doing so, managed to break about fifty sacred protocols simply by breathing. By the three sacred sons, muttered Instructor Kelnor, his third eye twitching uncontrollably. She's not even floating correctly. This was technically true, as Sarah was walking, rather than hovering three centimetres above the ground, like a proper student should. Sarah Chen stood out like a supernova in a meditation chamber. While the other students glided in with their ceremonial twelve layers of robes, she wore what she called workout clothes, apparently some sort of primitive combat garment made of something called spandex, the audacity. Welcome, candidates, Krasthal announced from his ceremonial floating platform, which had taken only two centuries to build. You stand, or in the human's case, awkwardly occupy space, in the most prestigious combat academy in the known galaxy. Sarah raised her hand, 
completely ignoring the traditional sequence of questioning, which usually involved three days of silent contemplation, before being permitted to even think about asking a question. Quick question. Why is everyone moving in slow motion? The assembled aliens gasped in perfect harmony, another skill that took decades to master. Pelvora nearly fainted, her head tentacles curling in distress. This is the sacred speed of movement, she explained, horror evident in all three of her voices. It takes fifty years just to learn to walk this slowly with grace. Oh, Sarah nodded, bouncing slightly on the balls of her feet. But how do you dodge attacks at that speed? Dodge. Krasthal's upper right eyebrow raised a precisely measured three millimetres. One does not dodge. One transcends the need to avoid physical contact through spiritual elevation and proper philosophical positioning. Sarah's face did something the aliens had never seen before. It scrunched up in confusion. The medical staff immediately began preparing traditional healing chants, assuming her face was malfunctioning. But what about when someone's trying to hit you? she asked, demonstrating with a quick shadow-boxing combination that made several instructors clutch their ceremonial pearls of wisdom. Hit! Hit! Instructor Kelnor's voice rose to the traditionally acceptable level of outrage. We haven't reached the chapter on physical contact yet. That comes after the century of theoretical combat meditation. Krasathul observed the human with growing concern. Her muscles, dense and powerful by death world standards, seemed to constantly twitch with barely contained energy. While his people had evolved to perfect the art of staying perfectly still for decades, Sarah appeared physically incapable of not moving for more than three seconds. Perhaps, he said with carefully measured condescension, the human would benefit from observing our most basic form, the gentle swaying of the cosmic wind. It only takes twenty years to master the first movement. Sarah grinned, showing far too many teeth for anyone's comfort. Great. When do we start? After the traditional pre-training meditation, of course, Pelvora interjected quickly. A mere five years of silent contemplation. Five years of just sitting there? No thanks. Can I just try it now? The assembled aliens shared a look that took three minutes to complete, as was proper. This human was going to be a problem. A big problem. A problem that moved far too quickly and asked far too many questions. And they had no idea just how right they were. Hash the first training session. The sacred training hall echoed with the sound of something the Academy hadn't heard in millennia. Actual movement. Sarah Chen stood in the centre of the circular ring of enlightenment, which wasn't actually a ring, but a dodecagon, because circles were deemed too simplistic about four thousand years ago. Now observe, Krasathol announced, his forearms moving in what appeared to be slow-motion interpretive dance. The first form of celestial movement, the dance of the drowsy space slug. Sarah watched as the Grand Master demonstrated the movement that had taken him two hundred years to perfect. His upper right arm slowly, very slowly, incredibly slowly, raised to shoulder height. Then, with all the speed of continental drift, his upper left arm began its journey toward what might eventually become a defensive position probably sometime next week. Your turn, he said, after finishing one-eighth of the first movement. But remember, it took me twenty years just to achieve the correct angle of the elbow joint. Sarah nodded, took a breath, and replicated the entire sequence perfectly in about fifteen seconds. The assembled instructors dropped their ceremonial tablets, all seventeen of them. The clatter echoed through the hall for what seemed like an eternity, mainly because the acoustics were designed to make everything echo for at least five minutes. No, 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 Pelvora shouted, then immediately did three hours of meditation to atone for her emotional outburst. You must feel the spiritual weight of each microscopically small movement. You must contemplate the philosophical implications of shifting your arm through space. Oh, right, Sarah said. Then to everyone's horror she did the sequence again, but this time added what she called improvements. Her movements flowed like water, incorporating the slow traditional poses into something that actually resembled effective combat techniques. 
This is unprecedented, Instructor Kelnor declared, his third eye practically bulging out of its socket. She's combining the sacred forms without first spending the mandatory century contemplating their theoretical unity. Krasathul watched with a mixture of fascination and terror as Sarah began incorporating movements from the eighteen positions of stellar grace, forms she had merely glanced at in the ancient scrolls during her lunch break. Stop! Those forms are not meant to be learned until after achieving the fifty-seventh level of spiritual combat awareness. But they flow perfectly into each other, Sarah demonstrated, transitioning smoothly between forms that were traditionally supposed to have three years of meditation between them. See? If you connect this move to this one, you've got a perfect defense against any incoming attack. Incoming attack? Krasathul's ceremonial beard bristled. We haven't had an actual combat application demonstration in, well, ever. It's all theoretical. Uh -uh. The human's movement patterns were beginning to draw a crowd. Younger students watched in awe as she transformed their ancient, deliberate art into something dynamic and practical. Some even dared to whisper that it looked, three sons forbid, cool. Look, Sarah said, demonstrating another sequence. If you take the meditation of the floating leaf and combine it with the stance of eternal patience, you get a really effective spinning kick. Spinning kick? All the instructors shouted in perfect harmony, their years of synchronized outrage training finally paying off. The forms are meant to be appreciated individually, like fine-aged space wine. But Sarah wasn't listening. She was too busy discovering that the supposedly separate seven forms of celestial movement could be linked together into one continuous sequence. A sequence that, to the absolute horror of the traditionalists, actually looked like it might work in a real fight. Fascinating mumbled Krasthol, forgetting to maintain his expression of serene disapproval. She's manipulating the energy flows in ways our ancestors never, I mean, in ways our ancestors deemed too primitive to consider. By the end of the first training session, Sarah had inadvertently created more new combinations of traditional forms than had been discovered in the past thousand years. The fact that she did this while chatting casually about her weekend plans was considered particularly offensive. Perhaps, Pelvora suggested carefully, we should move her to advanced classes. Advanced? Krasathol shook his head. We don't have a classification for whatever this is. She's turning our sacred art into something... practical. He whispered the last word, as if it were a curse. As Sarah continued to practice, now teaching a few brave students her innovations, Krasathul realized with growing unease that the human wasn't just learning their art. She was revolutionizing it. And in the process, she was challenging twelve thousand years of carefully cultivated tradition. The worst part? She was doing it all with a smile on her face, completely unaware that she was causing the greatest crisis in the Academy's history. Or perhaps she knew exactly what she was doing. With humans, it was always hard to tell. The emergency meeting of the Academy Council was proceeding exactly as planned, which meant absolutely nothing had been accomplished in the past six hours. This was, of course, entirely traditional. She mastered the sequence of infinite patience in three hours, Pelvora's voice cracked, breaking at least seven regulations about emotional control. It took me two decades just to learn how to stand still enough to begin learning it. Krasathul sat at the head of the ceremonial table of discussions, which was actually just a regular table that they'd spent five centuries blessing. The human's progress is concerning. Yesterday she completed the thousand steps of spiritual ascension in one afternoon, mainly because she pointed out that many of the steps were, in her words, the same step repeated with slightly different hand positions. The council chamber erupted into chaos, or what passed for chaos among the Zanathi, which meant slightly faster nodding and almost audible murmuring. The Council of Greater Spiritual Athletics has contacted us, announced Senior Administrator Borlak, waving a ceremonial datapad that had taken three generations to approve for use. They're concerned about the implications for the upcoming ten-millennium games, 
Apparently, some of Sarah's training videos have leaked onto the galactic network. Leaked! Krasathal's forearms all facepalmed simultaneously. How? She has something called a social media account, Borlak whispered, sending shivers through the assembled council. She's been posting daily updates of her progress. Her latest video showing the complete mastery of the Dance of Eight Moons has gone viral, I believe is the term. Meanwhile, in the training halls, Sarah's influence was spreading faster than a quantum pandemic. Young students were beginning to ask questions, the most dangerous of all possible developments. But Master Kelnor, one brave soul ventured, why can't we combine the stance of ethereal contemplation with the movement of celestial grace like Sarah does? It makes the form much more effective. Effective? Kelnor's third eye started twitching again. Effectiveness was never the point. The point was to take as long as possible to achieve the minimum possible result. But the damage was done. Students were beginning to practice in their free time, a concept that hadn't existed in the Academy's 12,000-year history. Some were even suggesting that maybe, just maybe, combat forms should actually be useful in combat. The political implications were staggering. The Sacred Combat Academy had built its reputation on being the most prestigious, most traditional, and most time-consuming martial arts institution in the galaxy. Now a human was suggesting that maybe spending three years learning to bow correctly was not the best use of time. She's even started a study group, Pelvora reported, her head tentacles curled in distress. They meet for something she calls practical application training. Yesterday they actually made contact with each other during practice. Physical contact, without first spending the mandatory decade contemplating the metaphysical implications of touching. The news only got worse. Other combat schools across the galaxy were beginning to ask uncomfortable questions. If a human could master these techniques so quickly, were they really as complex as the Zanathi had claimed? The Academy's marketing department, which consisted entirely of monks who communicated through meaningful silence, was in crisis. Perhaps, suggested one council member, breaking only sixteen protocols by speaking out of turn, we should consider adapting our teaching methods. The silence that followed was different from the usual ceremonial silence. It was the silence of a twelve-thousand-year-old institution facing the possibility that maybe, just maybe, they had been doing things the hard way on purpose. There is only one solution, Krasathal announced, rising from his chair with all the speed of a particularly lethargic glacier. We must accelerate the championship tournament. Let us see how well this human's innovations hold up against twelve millennia of traditional combat wisdom. None of them wanted to admit the terrifying truth. They were all secretly curious to see what would happen. And for a species that had elevated the suppression of curiosity to an art form, that was perhaps the most disturbing development of all. News of the accelerated championship tournament spread through the academy at nearly one-tenth the speed of a standard human walking pace, which for the Zanathi was practically light speed. Sarah's preparation methods continued to scandalize the traditional instructors. Instead of spending the customary three months meditating on the concept of preparation, she actually prepared the audacity of it all. She's in the training hall again, reported Pelvora, watching through the ceremonial observation window. She's practicing actual combat movements, without even a single incense stick burning. How can one center their spiritual energy without the proper array of scented smoke? Krasathal stood in his traditional pose of concerned observation, which he had spent only fifty years perfecting. More disturbing is how many students are watching her. Look at their faces. That expression of interest is most unseemly. The training hall had become a hub of unprecedented activity. Sarah had somehow convinced several younger students that the thousand-year forms could be practiced at speeds visible to the naked eye. Some were even sweating during practice, a concept so foreign that the Academy's ancient texts had no word for it. Grandmaster, Instructor Kelnor approached, his third eye closed in spiritual exhaustion. 
the human has mastered the sequence of celestial harmony. Impossible! That sequence takes a minimum of three centuries to grasp its basic concepts. She says, and I quote, it is just repeating the same three moves in different orders. The horror of this simple observation reverberated through the Academy's halls, mainly because the acoustics were specifically designed to make uncomfortable truths echo for as long as possible. Meanwhile, the Academy leadership was facing an internal crisis. The Board of Eternal Wisdom, which traditionally took seven years to make any decision, was being forced to respond to events happening in real time. Several board members had to be treated for acute temporal shock. Have you seen the betting odds? whispered senior administrator Borlack during an emergency meeting that had been going on for three days. The galactic sports networks are actually covering this. They're calling it the clash of centuries. Sarah, seemingly oblivious to the chaos she was causing, continued to train. She had somehow condensed the three hundred forms of strategic withdrawal, traditionally taught over three centuries, into what she called a basic defensive sequence that took about five minutes to perform. But the most disturbing development, Pelvora reported, her voice trembling, is that she started teaching other students her methods. They're calling it practical application class. They practice actual combat scenarios, instead of spending the traditional fifty years contemplating the theory of combat scenarios. And the upcoming championship tournament had taken on meanings far beyond its traditional ceremonial role. For the first time in 12,000 years, there was actual anticipation about the outcome. Some younger students had even been caught expressing excitement, a serious breach of the code of perpetual serenity. Krasthal spent long hours in his meditation chamber, which was really just his office with more incense. As the defending champion and Grand Master, he would face Sarah in the final round. The weight of twelve millennia of tradition rested on his four shoulders. Perhaps, he mused to the empty room, breaking his own rule about talking to furniture, it is time to show this human why our traditional forms have endured for so long. The arena was being prepared. Ceremonial banners were being raised at the traditionally correct speed of one centimeter per hour. The galaxy watched and waited. The stage was set for either the validation or the complete upheaval of the galaxy's most traditional combat art. Hash. The inevitable confrontation. Now, the day of the championship arrived with all the traditional fanfare, which meant absolute silence, punctuated by occasional meaningful coughs. The arena, designed to hold 10,000 spectators moving in perfect synchronized slowness, was actually full. Some audience members had even forgotten to maintain their traditional expressions of serene indifference. This is unprecedented, Pelvora whispered to Kelnor. There are humans in the audience. They're, they're eating snacks during a sacred combat ceremony. The arena's central platform, hovering exactly three meters above ground as tradition dictated, hummed with ancient power or possibly it was just the anti-gravity generators needing maintenance. Nobody had checked in a few centuries. Sarah Chen stepped onto the platform wearing her usual workout clothes, causing several traditionalists in the audience to faint in perfectly synchronized shock. Across from her, Krasothol appeared in the full ceremonial combat robes, all thirty-seven layers of them. The traditional pre-combat meditation will now begin announced the chief ceremonial officer. As usual, this will take approximately seven hours. Or, Sarah suggested, bouncing on her toes, we could just start. The gathered crowd gasped in unified horror, then immediately began their breathing exercises to recover from such an emotional display. But before anyone could begin the traditional protest sequence, Krasothol raised all four hands. Very well, human, let us see how your... Innovations fare against twelve thousand years of perfected tradition. The battle began with the traditional opening stance, which Sarah completely ignored in favor of actually moving. She flowed across the platform like water, combining elements of a dozen different sacred forms into something that looked suspiciously like effective combat techniques. Krasothol responded with a sequence of eternal patience, 
his forearms moving in perfect harmony at the traditional speed of approximately one millimeter per second. But something was different. He was adapting. Impossible, shouted someone from the crowd, breaking only 73 rules about spectator conduct. The Grand Master is performing the forms at one millimeter per one half second. Sarah's movements were poetry in motion, but not the traditional kind that took 40 years to recite. She transformed the stance of contemplative withdrawal into a spinning defense that flowed seamlessly into the movement of celestial grace. Except she made it actually graceful instead of just very, very slow. Krasthol found himself responding in kind. Centuries of training screamed at him to maintain the traditional pace, but something else, something that might have been actual combat instinct, pushed him to move faster. Your technique is unorthodox, he commented, while transitioning between forms at a speed that would have scandalized his ancestors. But there is merit in your interpretations. Sarah grinned, launching into a combination that blended six different millennial forms into ten seconds of flowing movement. Your forms are beautiful, Grandmaster. They just needed a little speed and practicality. The battle transformed into something never before seen in the Academy's history actual combat. Sarah's natural human adaptability merged with the precision of ancient techniques. Krasthal's forearms moved in patterns that respected tradition while acknowledging the need for practical application. She's using the sequence of infinite waiting as an actual attack pattern. Pelvora clutched her ceremonial pearls of wisdom. And it's... it's working! The audience watched in stunned silence, not the traditional kind, but the genuine article, as human innovation met ancient wisdom in a display that was both beautiful and functional. Sarah's speed and adaptability pushed Krasathal to move faster, think quicker, adapt forms that hadn't been modified in millennia. And then came the final sequence. Sarah launched into what appeared to be the traditional form of ultimate submission except she did it backwards, upside down, and at regular speed. Krasathol, caught between tradition and necessity, responded with all four arms moving in different patterns from four different celestial forms. The combination was devastating in its effectiveness and beautiful in its execution. When the movement ended, both competitors stood facing each other, Sarah grinning and Crazy Thull's face twitching in what might have been the beginning of an actual expression. Match concluded, announced the chief ceremonial officer, too shocked to maintain the traditional seven-hour deliberation period. The result is... A tie, Kresthal declared, breaking every protocol about speaking out of turn. The human has proven that innovation and tradition can coexist, perhaps even complement each other. The silence that followed was broken by unprecedented applause, led by the younger students, and most shockingly, several members of the Council of Eternal Wisdom themselves. The Sacred Combat Academy would never be the same after what became known as the Day of Acceptable Speed. Though traditionalists insisted on calling it the Great Velocity Crisis of the Modern Age, which took three hours to pronounce correctly. Change, Krasathol announced to the assembled Academy Council, is like a ceremonial robe. Sometimes you need to adjust it even if it took your ancestors four centuries to put it on in the first place. The impact of Sarah Chen's innovations rippled through alien society faster than a quantum hiccup. Combat schools across the galaxy began offering what they called accelerated courses, though most still insisted on at least a decade of preliminary meditation just to be safe. We have received 732 applications from humans, reported Pelvora who had finally learned to speak at speeds visible to the naked eye. And most shockingly, 3,000 from our own youth who want to learn the, and I quote, practical versions of the ancient forms. The Academy's curriculum underwent its first revision in 12,000 years. They now offered two tracks. Traditional, for those who preferred to take several centuries to learn basic movements, and accelerated, for students who brazenly wished to master combat forms while still young enough to actually use them. The human showed us something remarkable, 
Krausethor mused during a merely three-hour meditation session. Their adaptability, their drive to improve and innovate, it's both terrifying and admirable, like watching a supernova perform interpretive dance. Sarah's legacy was secured not just in the modified combat forms, but in the very philosophy of the Academy. The Council of Eternal Wisdom, in a shocking display of efficiency, took only two years to approve a new guiding principle. Tradition guides us, but innovation moves us forward. Besides, Krasithal observed to his stunned colleagues, think of all the new traditions we can create. Imagine the ceremonies we'll develop to celebrate learning techniques in mere decades instead of centuries. We could start a whole new era of extremely specific ritual observations. That seemed to cheer everyone up considerably. As for Sarah Chen, she graduated in what the Academy considered a scandalously short time, mere months instead of the traditional several centuries. She became the first human instructor at the Academy, teaching what she called practical applications of really old moves that actually work pretty well when you do them faster than continental drift. The name took only seven meetings to approve, a new Academy record. Perhaps, Krasothol concluded in his personal meditation journal, this is what our ancestors meant by the path of eternal growth. They just assumed we'd take eternally long to grow. The humans showed us another way, less eternal, more growing. Though I still maintain that some techniques require at least a few decades of contemplation. One must have standards after all. And so, the galaxy's most traditional combat academy learned its greatest lesson. That sometimes the best way to honor tradition is to let it evolve, preferably at speeds faster than geological processes. Though they still insisted on blessing the floor tiles, some traditions are worth keeping.